I would just like to say that public speaking is something I do not do. So I'm very nervous about this. Um, but yeah, as um said, I do wait, I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, yeah, cool. So I am the leader of the youth program. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever joined it or know what it is. Um, but to me it is something that was life changing for me, as uh, hard as that is to believe. Um, a little bit about me is them two are my little baby cats. <laughs> so they are my children. No one can tell me otherwise. <laughs> that um, black one there is Binks and the next one is Bella. Yes, I put up in a dress. <laughs> um, over there is me and my mum who's actually came here to support me today. So hi mum. <laughs> and then obviously me at the end. Um, one thing I would like to say before I start is that just because we have MRKH, that does not determine who we are and our self-worth mm -hmm. and how much we can be loved because of it. Mm -hmm. So I would like to say we're all warriors and we're all fighting this one step at a time during our own pace. So I'd just like to say that. Mm -hmm. um, I found out about MRKH and that I had it at the age of 15. Um, and the way I found out was because as um, thing was Gabs, I think it was said, um, no period um and I actually had um a lot of acne so I wanted to go on the pill to try and fix it and then they said obviously if you could have another period we can't do that which is what started the investigation um when I found out about what I had um I was absolutely just devastated um went into se to se severe depression sorry um, and I had no idea what my future was going to be because all I've ever wanted was to be a mother. And obviously having a young mum myself, um, I that's what I've known and that's what I've always wanted. Um, I felt very alone. I didn't feel like there was anyone who could understand my pain and what I was going through in my thoughts. Um, and even talking to my family was too hard for me because even though I know they will love me and support me no matter what, I was scared that they wouldn't understand me. And it's a very hard thing to understand from people that don't have it. As like it's, it's not the norm in society, it's very a uh, taboo subject, I would say. Um, and for four years, I was adamant I was not gonna speak about it. I pretended I didn't have it. Um, anyone that asked me questions, I was like, no, I don't like, I'm fine. I'm, I'm same as everyone else, I can have children. Um, and completely pretended I was like the best actor in the world at that point. Um, but in reality, obviously, my internal feelings and what I was thinking was very different. <laughs> um, and then I decided that come 2023, um, I was going to seek out because I took a very low turn. And that's when I was like, no, I, I need help now. Um and went to counselling therapy, which I heavily relied on, but I don't think it did, I didn't feel like it did anything for me. I didn't feel any better, I didn't feel any worse, apart from obviously crying after every session, um, which I, th I think that's sort of expected really. Um, and then my therapist um, actually mentioned about MRK to connect to me. And I was like, do you know what? I'll give it a Google, see if anything comes of it. And that's when I came across the youth programme. And uh, that was, I didn't really have many expectations for it, but it was absolutely life-changing. Um, so what it was, obviously I don't know if anyone knows about it or anything like that, but I did a six weeks um, sessions. It was once a week for two hours. Um, and it was actually Ali who was in there with me. And uh, Issa, who was on earlier, she was also in that group. So I was, I was nice to see a friendly face that I, um, that I remember. And a lot of questions that I had that no one could answer, including the hospital themselves, um, I learned so much about the condition and it made me feel better about myself. Um, it made me realise, you know what, I'm not the only one out there. There are so many others that we just don't know about because no one talks about it. Um. And when, sorry, I'm getting like a little bit lost. Um, but after the course was done, after all my questions and learning so much, 
how I saw myself was completely different. Um, I was learning to love and accept myself and realised, you know what, it, it might be okay. Um, one big question I had um, during it is, um, if I can't love myself, why would I expect someone else to? And that obviously definitely put a hindrance on relationships. Um, I was in a very toxic one for a very long time because I didn't think anyone else would accept me for who I was. Turns out that was very wrong. Um, so obviously, I don't know if anyone knows what this is, or if anyone else here has joined it online. Um, but yeah, it's just little small groups, and we have a very safe heart to heart conversations. We can talk about all of our experiences together and um, any thoughts and feelings we have. Um, obviously, none of it is medical advice, but it is just a friendly space to talk to, which I'm always here for. Um, I said, like, honestly, I would really recommend it because therapy and counseling did nothing for me. And this did. And this was, what, end of last year? And I before that, I couldn't speak about this. No one knew, no one knew that I had this. So, yeah, got out of that relationship and lo and behold, I found someone that does actually love me for me, um, which I'm very happy about. Um, it took me a while to approach the conversation with him, but I wanted to do it before anything serious happened because if he couldn't accept it, I didn't want to hurt myself more by getting into it in the first place. Um, but he was very, very reassuring said that his thoughts on me didn't change because he loves me, not what I can offer. Um, and uh, yeah, he uh, he surprises me every day. <laughs> um, one big thing to, in my opinion, that shows of how much progress I've made is the fact that I'm stood here in front of everyone today talking about this. And it's, even, even I'm still, I'm like, my legs are shaking. Um, <laughs> but it's it's really nice to see that there are friendly faces and there are people that can relate. And I really hope that obviously me being here is pr proof enough that it can get better. And everyone at their own pace, as I said, will eventually find loving themselves again. Because now, um, after obviously leaving the toxic one, um, I was really happy with myself. I got to the point where I could accept it. I, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Don't get me wrong, I still have low days. And when they're low, they are low. And it's very hard to get out of it. But the love and the support that everyone around me that knows, that gives they give me, it helps tremendously, even if it is just someone to sit in the same room with me and let me cry. It helps tremendously. But... Obviously, these are just some quotes that I found, um, which I think are really nice. Um, it says a lot, and well, they speak for themselves, really. But I don't know if anyone has any questions or not. If they do, just let me know. <laughs>